are blessed to do something that's not within that realm of gift. So I feel very grateful to have the circumstances that we've had in life. And as much as there are days when I'll tell you this is highly inconvenient and there are frustrations and there are days when, as a grown adult, I will just absolutely break down and cry in frustration as a grown adult. Yeah. But those things, again, they are what shape you. And when you figure out how to overcome something that is so drastic that I can cry as an adult about it and I can grieve that what I don't have, those times you figure out how to overcome those things, and that feels incredible. And what I've noticed is that not only does that feel good to me personally, but it inspires the people who observe my process in doing that and yeah. Allie's process. And Absolutely. that is what it's about. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I want to fall back here a minute. I, I mean, we, we see that obviously the two of you made it, right? And we, we also, made it. <laughs> you made it. And, and we also see some of the, and have spoken just briefly about some of the incredible things that you've, the two of you have accomplished, and we've just barely begun to touch on that. But I want to come back to you for a minute, Allie, and I want, you know, this, this show is Women Heart to Heart, okay? I want to get in the heart of you, and I want to know what was it like as a sister as an identical twin, to be the one with the advantage of the size, and and how did you how did you use that to further the two of you along? You know, I, there are gifts with that. I think probably most people realize. Sure, there is always a component of me, and I think there always will be that often wonders, my goodness, why didn't I? receive too much oxygen instead of her? Why weren't my eyes damaged instead of hers? Um, and clearly, I, I, you know, from, from the perspective looking back, I'll say I probably wouldn't have been as strong as Andrea was, you know, because she, the perspective that she has it, is definitely a gift. And so I think a lot of people look at it being such a, a blessing that I have eyesight, but for me it really has been a blessing of the, you know, that because she didn't have eyesight, I have learned so much from Andrea. And I think she would say the same, and it, you know, in the reverse order, too. But it's been a real gift, especially being twins. You know, we always talk about sibling rivalry and was that component there, and it certainly was. And we, we actually academically had a journey together. We um, athletically had a journey together as young as, yes, young athletes and, and even young adults throughout our collegiate careers. Um, and then certainly we've now grown and, and had our own families and, and business endeavors. But as that has happened, it has been an absolute gift to expect nothing other than what Andrea has done. And, and what I mean by that is we've been able to use our sibling rivalry and our competitive spirit in such a positive way instead of beating each other down, we've always been able to lift each other up as twins and as individuals. So we have always enjoyed being able to leverage that, not only our twinship, but just being human side by side and being able to be a mentor, not only for the one that didn't have sight, but she was the, the mentor of vision for me. Without her eyesight, she still never lost her vision. So for me, that was a beautiful gift. I mean, what an inspiration to be able to grow up next to. Was it hard to live up to? Probably. In some cases, absolutely. I mean, there is really no other person on this planet that I know that will touch as many lives as I see Andrea touching. I mean, really, she is such a life that everyone she meets loves her. And that is incredible, and I learn every day from her. I will always learn every day from her. She shapes me more than anything um, on this planet. And, and for me, I would, you know, obviously I would never want it any other way. Yeah, and you know, Andrea, you had a choice to make. Do you realize you had a choice to make? Absolutely. I have that choice every day to this yeah, day. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a one-time choice. It was, and thankfully, my mother in particular and my sister in particular, but certainly my four fully-sided brothers as well, 
played a big role in teaching me that choice because every day that I woke up, there was an expectation that I would figure this out, that I'm not going to act like what society thinks a blind person would be. I'm not going to be someone who is hindered by blindness. I will not be defined by blindness. I can be a very productive and successful woman who happens to be blind. That's the side note. Yes, I've overcome things, but I've done so with the perspective that the expectation is that is the way it's going to be. Yeah, so you chose not the quote-unquote regular life, the life that society would form or, or, or uh, create out of the concept of being blind. You just created your own way. Well, certainly it's the, it's the, path, the path less traveled, you know, and I have had circumstances that just don't make sense for blind people. For example, uh, I, I'm going to date myself for just a minute here and tell you that one of the things that we did when we were very young is, ba is baton twirling. <laughs> and, you know, Allie decided one day that she was interested in baton twirling, and I would guess we were probably about six years old when this happened, and she thought that was neat. And my expectation was, well, I, oh, of course, why couldn't I do that? I mean, why can't a blind person throw spinning metal projectiles in the air, <laughs> spin around a few times and catch it? I mean, why can't a blind person do that? Because the expectation was that I could. And I tell you what, there was just the mentality that that's what was going to happen. So I practiced alongside Allie every day, and we did our fundamentals. And I learned baton twirling through timing. So whenever I would throw the baton up, I knew it was coming down. It was coming down in a certain place where I put it every time. And it was repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. And I learned how to do the timing. So even though I couldn't see it, I could still catch it. As long as I threw it myself and knew where it was, I could catch that baton. And Allie and I ended up world champion baton twirlers. Now, come on, blind baton twirler, give me a break. That's not what you're supposed to do. <laughs> You know, one of the things that um, that I do in my coaching and that I do at Live at Choice is we begin to we talk about that uh, subject and conversation called "It is the way that it is because I say so." And Absolutely. what I'm hearing you say is, I could be a champion twirler just like my sister because I say so, and Absolutely. for no other evidence, right? Right. There was, there was not only was there no other evidence, there was every evidence that that's not the way it's supposed to be right right oh yeah you had there was plenty of evidence that you could not do it absolutely plenty of evidence so so i i really get it that mom was a very strong woman behind the two of you and um and just really stood strong and that, that the two of you could do equally the same Absolutely. And she expected that we both not only, that we are not only doing the same, but the expectation was that we would be great. And I know that there are listeners on the call who won't necessarily have that person in their life. Right. But I'm telling you, sometimes, and I know that that's not the case. I know that that's something that was, was very wonderful for us. And I'm acknowledging that wonderful aspect for us. But there are people who do not have that particular force. And I am here to tell every single person that hears my voice right now, that person can be you. Absolutely. You have got to give yourself the permission and the expectation that success belongs to you. And so many women, and I think you probably see this a lot, Bellamy, with your work, so many women forget to give themselves permission. Everyone else might have permission to be successful, but in, in the real world, we as women in particular have to give ourselves permission to be successful and expect that that's what's going to happen or else it's not going to. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, life moved on for the two of you and y'all began conquering milestones after milestones. So would you like to share a little bit about how some of these adversities all turned to victories for the two of you? And I'll, let the, I'll just let the two of you talk back and forth about who shares what because I have a list here about a mile long, <laughs> and uh, I mean, the, your, your story is, I, we, we whipped adversities to create nothing but victory, so I'm going <laughs> to hand it over to you.